Hey, everybody. Hello, everyone in the back. Oh my god, Theo's awake. Impressive. Nice shirt, by the way. Um, so, I want to welcome everybody to Surge 2013. Uh, how many people here are first timers? Whoa. There you go. So, you guys really were scared of Baltimore. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so first, yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, we have the uh, biggest crowd ever, as they say. Uh, so we're definitely glad to see that. Um, thank you for, for making it. Thank you, especially to those of you who were at the bar last night after I left uh, at the Spotify reception. I am actually surprised to see most of you here. Um, that, that's pretty good. Um, we want to get right into the, the keynote this morning. Uh, one of the key tenets that we've always sort of felt about Surge is that the people who come here have to work on things you know, that are, are very important to the companies that they work with, to the people who depend on those systems. Uh, and this year we thought what we really wanted to do was get somebody who could speak to a topic that, quite frankly, is actually more important than what most of us do on a daily basis, and, and who lives and, and has had to live that, that sort of thing. So. Um, so we have brought forth a keynote speaker who I think will trump what most of us do on our daily lives. Apollo 13 flight controllers, give me a go, no, go for launch. Booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. We're go fly. 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, Spacecraft is moving five miles a second in Earth orbit and seven miles a second to and from the moon. So you cover an awful lot of territory in a very short period of time. So we always try to use every second, every minute when things are going right to individually prepare ourselves for what is coming next. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. From ABC News Space Headquarters, here is commentator Frank Reynolds. There has been an emergency in the flight of Apollo 13. The uh, prime objective of the mission, the landing on the moon, the further exploration of the lunar surface has been canceled. And now the only consideration that remains is the safe return of the three astronauts. Houston, we are venting something out into space. Definitely, uh gas of some sort. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. If we were going to save any elements of the spacecraft, time was going by, and the frustration at going 5, 10, 15 minutes into this process, and still not being at the bottom of it, still seeing the life's blood escaping. Okay, we've got an update on the time. Looks like we've got about 18 minutes until we get down to the cutoff point. I don't care what anything was designed to do care about what it can do. I want this mark all the way back to Earth with time to spare. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. Any penetration of the heat shield would have uh, very possibly allowed a uh, heat leak, plasma leak, and eventually a burn through uh, during the process of entry. There, were, uh, uh, there wasn't anything about this entire mission that was a free ride be the worst disaster NASA has ever experienced. With all due respect, sir, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. Odyssey Houston, do you read me? Odyssey, this is Houston, do you read? An expected time of reacquisition, the time when the astronauts were expected to come out of blackout, has come and gone. But all any of us can do now is just listen and hope. Blackout is one of those times when there's, uh, there's nothing we can do. And seconds become minutes, and minutes become hours. And if you haven't heard, boy, it gets you right in the stomach. Odyssey, uh, Houston, do you read? Hello, Houston, this is Odyssey. It's good to see you again. And then it's again tradition that uh, you wait until the uh, crew gets in the carrier deck. 
at which time cigars in the world map lights up. Mm. Oh, shit. It was neat. Gene Krantz, uh, NASA Flight Control Director, Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient. As the leader of the Tiger team of flight directors who brought the Apollo 13 spaceship safely back to Earth on April 17, 1970, Gene Krantz demonstrated extraordinary courage and heroism. Commissioned into the Air Force in 1954, Krantz flew high-performance jet fighter aircraft and was a flight test engineer on early jet bomber development. In 1960, Krantz joined the NASA Space Ta Task Group uh, over in Langley, Virginia, as a flight controller on Project Mercury. He served as flight director for the 33 missions of Project Gemini, Apollo, and Skylab, and led flight control team during the first lunar landing. Krantz retired from NASA in 1994 after 37 years of federal service, as currently a consultant and speaker. The hit film Apollo 13 chronicles Krantz's struggle to devise the plan that would safely bring back the ship and its crew of three astronauts home after the oxygen system had failed. Actor Ed Harris portrays Krantz in the film, uh, and the film is directed by Ron Howard. Since his retirement from NASA, Krantz has served as flight engineer on a B-17 Flying Fortress, constructed uh, an aerobatic biplane, published in the New York Times best-selling memoir of his experience in the space program, titled Failure is Not an Option, Mission Control from Mercury to Apollo 13 and Beyond. Uh, it was selected by the History Channel as the basis for the documentary on mission control. Without further ado, please welcome Gene Krantz. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. You know, it's sort of neat to see a technical glitch amongst this uh, group of uh, people. I, you know, as limited I am uh, as I am with uh, all of my uh, technology at home, it's neat to see the uh, real experts have a problem every once in a while. You know, when Jim Lovell called down from the spacecraft, hey, Houston, we got a problem. All I had were my teams and mission control and a learning curve that started about 10 years earlier at a place called Cape Canaveral. At that time, the Cape was nothing but marsh salt grass, corrugated steel buildings, and antennas. And it was there we learned of leadership, trust, values, and teamwork. Mission control is a spectacular leadership laboratory where we teach our young controllers to achieve excellence as a controller, as leader, and as a team member. And there they learn the difference between the I and the we component of a team, because when their time comes, we need our controllers to step forward, assume a leadership role, make their contribution, then when they're through, return to the ranks within a team. Our work develops chemistry, because chemistry in any organization is a force amplifier. It amplifies the individual's talent as well as the team's talent. And chemistry in our line of work leads to communication that is virtually intuitive because we must know when the person next to us needs help or a few more seconds to come up with an answer. Now, I first ventured into space in Project Mercury, and each one of our launches was a chapter in the history book of spaceflight. Our mistakes were violent, they were brutal, they were visible. But we learned much more. We learned of leaders and leadership. Leaders have integrity. They're teachers, they're team builders, they're great listeners. And when there's trouble, Leaders are out front. We also learn a lot about ourselves as individuals because many of us came in from aircraft flight tests in those days and our egos were much bigger than this room. And it was tough at times to get people to work together. But we knew that success would only come as a team, so we became one. And we learned to check our ego at the door every day when we came to work. A lot of times we're asked what was really the key to the success in this mission. He had a superbly trained crew of young people right on down the line, but the key is it was the trust that existed between the team on the ground and the crew in space, because without this absolute trust, 
we would have never been able to execute the off-the-wall procedures we had to do to get this crew back home. So this is the story of Mission Control, story of Apollo 13. It's a story of a team of young men united through leadership, trust, and values, and a team that truly believes that in our line of work, failure will never be an option. Thank you very much. Yeah. There we go. Apollo 14 is very interesting for, since we got a nice techie group, uh, we had a solder ball floating around inside the abort switch. And we determined this in the lunar module uh, in the very last pass as the spacecraft is going behind the moon. And in one rev, two hours, we wrote a software patch to bypass the abort switch during engine start which allowed that mission to get down to the surface of the mission. So we voiced that instruction up to the crew. Uh, Alan Shepard was on board the spacecraft, and basically he had never seen that patch before, and as he came around the front side of the moon, we voiced that patch up to him. He executed it, got the engine started, started going back down to the moon, then we had to voice up another patch to basically remove the patch that we had just put in there. So it was a very interesting uh, challenge. When we, uh, started the space program, as I said, our, our training ground was down at uh, Cape, uh, Cape Canaveral. And uh, in my book, I characterize it as the intensity of a football training camp with basically the confinement of being on a submarine. And uh, this is the kind of environment, but we had a spectacular leader in Chris Kraft. And basically, he was a marvelous listener, teacher, but basically he was, he was to show you how to get the job done. He built a generation of leaders under him that then manifolded out because we not only had to learn to fly the missions and build the technology, we had to build the, the people. And one of the things we looked for in selecting our team members was to select people who wanted to do something rather than be something. Ego is a killer in the business we had. 